Hi everybody, um, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, my name's Kitty Chiller, the CEO of Gymnastics Australia. Um, this is the first of our, our weekly webinars to support you guys, our clubs, and I'll talk a little bit more about that before I actually introduce and we get this uh, we get this webinar today going. I think just I think we're all we're all learning a lot about technology and technical and virtual meeting forms in this time. Um, I certainly greatly increased my understanding of all things technical. Um, so I think what we found if people mute themselves uh, when not talking. And while it's lovely to see everybody's videos and faces, um, if you want to cut your video off, if you're having problems with the sound, that tends to uh, improve the quality of sound if you're having any problems. Um, we're all living in surreal times. We know that. This is absolutely unprecedented. And all of us are affected in so very many ways, personally and professionally. Our lives, our livelihoods and our sport the sport that we all love, that we all work in, uh, and that we've all devoted so much of our time to, especially you guys, our clubs. And we'd probably be naive to think that our sport will ever be the same again. Hopefully it will be better, but it's gonna take time. And it's gonna take us all quite a lot of time to get back to where we were. We at Gymnastics Australia, and I know our colleagues in the state and territories as well, are working very hard to support, to make sure that we support you, our clubs. You guys are the cornerstone of our sport. You're the cornerstone of our organisations. You're the cornerstone of our membership. And you're the heart and soul of what we do and what we're about. So during this time, more than any other time, it's essential that we at Gymnastics Australia and obviously your state and territory colleagues and associations work to support you with what you need. We're developing a range of activities and resources that you'll see rolled out over the next however many months we're in this situation for. And those resources and activities are to support you now during this phase and navigating this phase but I think also very importantly to not take an eye off the future. We need to make sure that when we're good to go, when we're all told that we can open our doors again, that we're ready to go. And there's going to be a lot of other sports there who, who aren't ready. And I'm talking to a lot of sports now. And I think that's something that we can all do as well as navigating our current land, landscape. It's making sure that we and our clubs and our organisations are ready to go and strong to go and prepared to get our members, to get our kids, to get our participants, to get our athletes back through your doors so that you can continue to not only survive, but to flourish well into the future, as can gymnastics. So when we're good to go, we need to be ready to go. Another saying that, that I like and I'm adopting within Gymnastics Australia is that we all need to manage today to enable tomorrow. So what we're doing today will help us get back to the level, will help you get back to the level that we were all at before this situation and come back stronger than ever. So this weekly webinar series, uh, obviously today is the first one. We'll have a series of topics over the next couple of months, each one aiming to help you. So we're obviously really keen to know what you need, what you want from us. So during today's webinar and all the future ones, if you use the chat function, while we're not answering questions live today, any questions that you have, if you utilise the chat function, any suggestions of topics that you might want to hear in the next couple of months moving forward, I'll then summarise them with the weekly um, letter, email, that I'll be sending to you all. That'll be summarising any frequently asked questions or topics that you'd like addressed and also promoting what our topic will be for next week's webinar. So that letter this week, obviously because of Easter, um, will be coming out uh, ideally late tomorrow night. So enough of me, um, <clears throat> excuse me, our first weekly webinar is an important one because it's about you and we need to be strong. Our health and our well-being is vitally important so that we can have the focus and we can have the strength and we can have the the ability to look forward so that we can help our respective organisations moving forward. 
So I'll hand over now to Kim Gray, who's our Athlete Wellbeing and Engagement Officer at Gymnastics Australia. And she will introduce, and we're very lucky to have with us today, uh, Gemma Cross, who's a psychologist from the AIS. And this webinar will be all about you guys. So I really hope that, that you all get something from it. And thank you very much for logging on today. So Kim, over to you. Thanks, Kitty. Um, hi, everyone. Yeah, I'm, my name's Kim. I'm the Athlete Wellbeing and Engagement Manager here at GA. Um, so I've been working with the high performance uh, national categorised squad members because um, obviously there's been a lot of change in, for everyone, but uh, particularly for those athletes um, that were, you know, in the high performance program. But that, that doesn't exclude, you know, anyone that's also from the, the young Jimmies all the way up to the top. Um, this has in, impacted everyone. Um, so... I think it's just a huge case of just supporting, you know, I'm sure you've got a lot of pressure on you guys to support your athletes as well. Um, I'm, I'm looking to support the ones here, and um, but it just sort of drip feeds down to make sure that you guys are looking after yourselves first, because that's, you can't pour from an empty cup, so you need to be making sure that you're, you're looking after yourselves. Um, as Kitty said, we're really lucky to have Gemma Cross on to have a chat to you today. She's a mental health advisor and psychologist from the AIS Athlete Wellbeing an engagement team. The mental health team there has been, the whole team as a, as a whole, but the mental health um, element have just been working around the clock in the last few weeks um, and have just ramped up their resources and, uh, um, you know, we're really blessed to have be able to draw on them and their experience and their knowledge. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to introduce Gemma. Thank you so much again, Gemma. Um, and, yeah, I will hope to see your face in a second. Thanks so much, Kim, and thanks for having me, everyone. I think it's really great to see gymnastics putting an emphasis on mental health and wellbeing during this time. Um, Kim, did you have a PowerPoint we wanted to use, or do you want me to just talk through some of the topics? Yep, sorry about that, Gem. Nope, we're just going to keep going. Okay, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> so, uh, a few topics that we'll cover today. So, first off, I really wanted to start talking about some of um, the common responses. Um, to people affected by COVID-19. Um, we know that we'll all have uh, individual responses to this and we all might react a little bit differently, but in order to understand the kind of variety of responses will help us um, to be more empathetic listeners, to better offer support and to kind of understand what we might be going through as well. So some of the common responses that we've seen so far are people having a lot of fear and anxiety around potentially falling ill themselves, losing their livelihood, um, facing some challenges around securing the things that they need, for example, food or personal care items, so that you've probably noticed that with supporting, and being socially excluded or quarantined as well. And this sense of fear and anxiety is completely normal and to be expected in such an uncertain time um, with a period of change. Some people might find themselves feeling powerless in their ability to protect loved ones or to provide the appropriate support, especially now that we're having to practice social distancing and many of us are caring for people in the elderly category or who are vulnerable as well. So some people due to being in isolation or quarantine might be feeling a sense of hopelessness or boredom, loneliness, um, or feeling really flat to, to, due to this isolation. Some people might be feeling kind of ambivalent or uncertain about the situation, and this can include kind of engaging in high-performance sport or sporting goals as well, as well as kind of those general life goals as well, because kind of all of our timelines have been shuffled and we're not quite sure what the next couple of months are going to look like. That said, some people might even find themselves experiencing a range of positive emotions as well. So some people might be finding um, they're feeling a sense of pride in the ways that they're coping or a sense of resilience in putting their coping strategies in place, as well as kind of witnessing um, the community coming together. So I hope that's given kind of a bit of an understanding of what might be going on for yourself or the people around you. Um, and just noticing that over the coming weeks, we might kind of have some periods of heightened emotion and it might come in waves for, for certain people. And even if you're not feeling one of the above emotions, I would imagine that people around you um, may be having those challenges. So 
some of the ways that you can uh, support yourself during this time um, would definitely be to limit your media exposure. And this is in the sense of limiting it to trusted resources. So things like the World Health Organization, but also limiting how much you're checking the news and receiving information as well. So maybe only checking it once or twice a day, as opposed to um, refreshing and getting that news on an hourly basis. I know a lot of news sites are offering those kind of live updates and it can be um, quite tempting to follow along. However, that can be quite anxiety producing, getting um, a large stream of information. Uh, it's really important to stay connected to your family and friends during this time and using um, video conferencing, text messaging, whatever it is that works for you because we know social connection is really crucial to our well-being. I think it's also important to keep in mind that a lot of people will be spending a lot more time with people in their household than usual and that it's really normal that living with someone and being with someone 24-7 uh, may give rise to a bit of tension or a few arguments. That's completely okay and really normal. So just making sure that we're keeping up our connection with other people outside of our household can be really important. Um, also making sure that we practice self-care by doing things that you know have worked for you in the past. Um, so making sure that you're exercising, eating well, um, meditating and engaging hobbies that you enjoy. I think this period can be really challenging because this idea of social distancing has restricted a lot of people's usual well-being activities. So whether that be going to the gym, going to see friends out for a coffee or things like that. So it's about just finding new ways to be able to practice those things um, as well. And also a big part of that is creating a routine for yourself um, and just being kind to yourself that it might take a couple of weeks to find the right routine for you. That's perfectly okay, but just to experiment a little bit and create that sense of routine, especially working from home. Um, if you want some more tips about working from home and looking after your mental health, the Black Dog Institute has a really great resource, and that's particularly around kind of allocating a start and finish time for your day, scheduling times for meals, snacks, and exercise, and setting up a kind of a dedicated workspace kind of free from distraction. So that will be really important to kind of maintain a sense of normalcy for you. And then also um, trying to keep things in perspective. Uh, most often when we feel a sense of anxiety or fear, we can tend to uh, think of the worst case scenario and kind of underestimate our ability to cope. So just making sure that we're keeping things in perspective by looking at reliable resources of information and taking reasonable precautions as recommended by health professionals. So practicing hand hygiene and um, obeying kind of social distancing rules and so doing things that we can control. Um, hopefully this is all going well and I'm not going too fast for everyone. If you do have, I've got a thumbs up from Kim. If you do have any questions, please um, put them in the group chat and I'm more than happy to answer any of those topics further. Um, I know a lot of you are in support roles as kind of coaches and staff and a lot of you will be looked upon as a really good source of support uh, for people. So some ways that you can be helping other people are to make sure that you're sharing kind of quality information with um, family, friends and athletes. So again, sticking to those reliable sources and correcting any misinformation you hear. Um, making sure that you're being inclusive and looking after people. A lot of times in pandemics, people might um, feel that there can be some kind of discrimination associated with people need to be quarantined. So making sure we're keeping everyone engaged and in the loop. Um, there's a technique that we call psychological first aid, which just has a few kind of guidelines for looking after people. Um, the first step is for looking out for people who show signs of distress. So you might be looking for people who have showed signs of difference in their thinking. So are they thinking more negatively? Are they being more hard on themselves? Are they thinking in those kind of worst case scenario type situations? Are they feeling differently? So have you noticed that they're more flat? Do they seem more anxious or agitated? And are they acting differently? So are they withdrawing? They're not communicating as much. Maybe they're not as motivated. So there would be some of the signs that I would be looking out for that someone's maybe not coping um, with the current situation. So if you've noticed some of those signs, 
um, looking to instigate a conversation about their well-being. I'm sure you're all really well placed to have those conversations and you probably do them all the time. So simple things like, you know, I've noticed you're, you've been really tired and withdrawn lately. How are you coping? I want to check you. And then listening um, to their needs in the conversation. I find a lot of people in kind of our type of roles where we're supporting a lot of people, we often want to fix things and solve problems. And I think that's a really great quality to have. But it's really important in these situations to just kind of sit back and see if we can um, listen and provide some support before jumping in with problem solving. Um, and then once we've listened to their kind of needs and concerns, then linking them in with additional support. So whether that you be to share in some kind of uh, psychoeducation on mental health and self-care, whether it be linking them in with a psychologist or kind of mental health uh, support as well. And that goes for your athletes, for your colleagues, for your friends and family as well, making sure that you're having those well-being conversations. Um, so I suppose on that, how do you know when someone might need additional support, whether that be yourself or um, family member, colleague or things like that? Um, during this time, as I've said, it's really normal for people to be feeling anxious or symptoms of depression, flats, those kinds of things. Um, what I would say that if it is going on for a period of time, so maybe two weeks, and it's starting to really impact on how they function in the world, so they're not able to do the things that they want to do, whether that be work, um, hobbies, engaging with friends, then it'd be time to reach out for some support in that area. The best way to do that um, would be to first touch base with your GP and arrange an appointment with them. Um, they will then uh, have a conversation with you about your mental health and they can write a mental health care plan. And this will allow you to access 10 rebated sessions per calendar year. And they can also provide some support in terms of recommendations for particular psychologists. Um, what I will say as well is that uh, my team at the AIS um, we run the Mental Health Referral Network, and although uh, currently we're just supporting categorised athletes and staff working in the high performance environment, we are open for people to give us a call and get some, um, if you have any questions or you want some advice, more than happy um, to talk that through. You'd be either talking to me or um, to other psychologists on our team. And we really encourage someone, if you're not sure how to reach out to someone or um, you're not sure how to have that conversation, um, to just give us a call and I can probably put those contact details in the chat or you can follow up with Kim. Um, so that kind of ends me for now, but if you have any questions or anything like that, um, more than happy to answer. That's fantastic, Gemma. Thank you so much. There are a couple of comments on the side. Um, I think it was fairly, you know, very real advice for us all. And we are all in support roles. We are all responsible for staff and for people. And above all else, people during this during this period is what's going to get us through. So, thank you for your um, like no nonsense and and real advice that I think can be can be really used by by all of us during this time. Something that I just and we, we've got a few minutes left, so um. We probably can take if there are any specific questions. If anyone does want to send a chat through, we probably have got purely if I if I get the thumbs up. Um, we've got ten minutes to to take any questions live now if you'd like. Something that I've been trying to do with with our guys at Gymnastics Australia is to, as much as we can, to use this time to achieve something positive, but to acknowledge and celebrate that as well, and to look at you know something. And I know I've ticked two off already. Something that's been on my to do list for literally a year and I just have never had the bandwidth or the time to be able to do it and to sort of to check in with those and get some things done that we've all been wanting to do personally or professionally and and then tell someone about it and celebrate that I think it's easy to lose our sense of accomplishment um, and fulfillment during this period when our lives have been sort of stripped away from us so I don't know if that's a thing that you think might be worthwhile as well for as a bit of an approach for people to do yeah, I think that's a really excellent point. We know that learning and engaging in learning is really important to our well-being as it gives us a sense of confidence as well as a sense of achievement. And I think that picking out activities that you can do and implementing them in your routine can be fantastic. I am cautious that there does seem to be a bit of a movement among people to be 
kind of really productive during this period of time and to implement a whole new range of activities and to-do lists and new self-care strategies. And oh, while I love the kind of sentiment of this, I do want to emphasize that it's okay if we, you know, just take a couple of weeks to ourselves and we maybe have days that aren't as productive and it takes us a little bit of a while to get into our routine. Um, but just really drawing on those um, things that you've used in the past. And that learning can be really simple and short activities. Like you said, maybe just ticking off one thing off your to-do list, or maybe just even reading an article or listening to a podcast with a different perspective or a new topic that you're interested in. So just setting those small kind of achievable goals um, in regards to your learning. And I really like that piece around celebrating uh, small wins. I think that's really fantastic and practical gratitude as well so yeah really great don't worry i'm not doing too much i'm not setting too high a standard with the achievement but it, it is <laughs> as you say, it's the um the little thing and and the celebrating i'm just noticing a comment now about the um not to celebrate, reminder and i think that that's something important for us all to do um uh yeah someone sort of asked what what was the phrase you used <laughs> it was manage today to enable tomorrow, manage today to enable tomorrow. And, and another one that I like is a bit of a catch cry that I said was, uh, when we're good to go, we are ready to go. So when we're good to go, we are ready to go. Any other questions for Gemma? Hey Jam, it's just Kim here. You, you mentioned Black Dog earlier as a great resource for checking out the working from home guidelines and I'm sure they've got a lot of other stuff. Um, are there any other really good websites that you've stumbled across particularly in this time that might, might help as well? Because um, there's obviously a lot out there too. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to see a lot of people getting on the resources. So some that I would probably recommend are the Australian Psychological Society. So they put on, out some great resource sheets on how to cope in isolation. And that has a few tips around kind of managing um, household dynamics and relationships, as well as setting up your routine and managing anxiety during this period. Also um, some tips around how to talk to children about COVID-19 and some anxiety. So they're, they're really helpful. Um, Black Dog Institute, like I said, has a great one from working from home as well as some kind of more general well-being information. Um, Beyond Blue has uh, a good resource around looking after your mental health well-being. And then also finally Phoenix Australia has some really good tips um, around looking after your well-being as well as um, looking after your organisations and kind of employees well-being as well. Thanks, HJ. Madly scribbling there we'll um we'll include all those links and all those resources in the letter that um we send to you all tomorrow night just so um yeah just so that you've got all those resources and you can you can pick and choose um one other thing Gemma, and you mentioned about you know being locked up in households with people and that creates a bit of tension and and pressure and stress um which i can well understand I think on the other side too, so I live on my own, apart from my cat, who's getting a lot more attention than, than she ordinarily would like, and she'd much prefer to be asleep 10 hours a day without me patting her every hour. Um, but people living on their own as well, it, you know, without that social interaction, it's, it's the other end of the spectrum, but it's, it's the same potential issues as being locked in a house with somebody. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's um, definitely need to consider your circumstances. And if you are alone, it's really about creating that routine for yourself. Maybe it's about creating a list of activities, positive activities you enjoy, sticking it on the fridge. And if you're feeling down, you're feeling a bit lonely, maybe going to one of those activities that you know will be um, a positive experience for you. Also, um, making sure that you schedule throughout your week, kind of catch ups with friends or family members. I'm sure all those people who are living in families and households that are pretty chaotic, they'll really appreciate having someone outside the household to reach out to. So yeah, I think if you're alone, it's about really being proactive um, about scheduling, scheduling that in. Okay, we've only got a couple minutes to go. I don't think, unless I've missed any, I don't think um, there's any other particular questions that have come across in the chat. Um, 
Gemma, I'd just like to say thank you enormously for, for giving up your time today. Um, it's been super helpful to me and I'm seeing th thumbs up and, and thanks on the, on the chats. It's, you know, it's not often that we, that we do take the time to, to look after ourselves. And as I said at the start, I think that's, that's super important that we do that. So I know how busy you are uh, and Kim also for setting this up. Um, so thank you very much. I really, really, really appreciate it. And I think it's a really good topic to start off our, our weekly webinar series. So thank you very much for joining us today. Stay safe, stay healthy uh, and stay engaged everybody. And, and good luck with, um, with everything and we'll speak to you next week.